Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to another episode in the series Gardens of the Righteous. With myself here is Sheikh Haitham al Haddad, who is from the UK and is currently on the board of the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founder of the website www.islam21c.com. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We took the last episode to discuss the extremely important hadith of the importance of jama'ah and specifically jama'ah in the masjid. Is there anything you would like to summarize? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. To be honest with you, I feel that the topic is very important and maybe we did not give it its due right. I know we will discuss salat al-jama'ah insha'Allah later, but there are few things to be said. Okay. First of all, we said pray in jama'ah. Yeah. Pray in jama'ah as much as you can. Now, I am sure that many of our audience are not living in Muslim countries. Many of them, they take the matter easily and they give themselves justification that this is not a Muslim country. Mm. I can't perform salatul jama'ah. And as a result, even some of them, they treat themselves, astaghfirullah al-azim, astaghfirullah, as if they are saying, Ya Allah, it is enough that we are praying. This is arrogance. We should not think of any ibadah as we are doing it because of Allah, not because of us to be saved on the day of resurrection. Yani we are, astaghfirullah al-azim, giving Allah favor. We need it. This is a big problem. And this is the attitude of some people that when they, yani they do a good deed, some, a small good deed, or they pray, they say, oh, mashallah, he's a good person. And, okay, akhi, is enough that he's praying, enough that she's wearing hijab. On the other side, they do hundreds of thousands of sins. And they don't count those, but one deed or two deeds, they count them as, this is more than enough. The righteous person, the righteous person, whatever he does, yeah, he will think that it is very little, very little for a number of reasons. First of all, it is very little for to worship the supreme being, Allah. Yeah, رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما, the Lord of everything, the heavens, the the earth, the Creator of everything. This is one thing. The other thing is out of embarrassment of this great Lord that who has given you everything. Whatever you do is very little in exchange of what he has given you. Even sujood for our whole life would not be enough. Even sujood will not be enough. On the other side, we need to save ourselves from the fire of hell. We need to save ourselves from the fire of hell. One of these scholars, Tawbah ibn sunnah he calculated his age, and he found that it is 60 years, yeah? Over 10,000 and so days. Then he said, if I committed one single sayyah every day, then it means that I have committed more than 10,000 sayyah. What about if I committed 10 sayyah every day? This means that I have committed 100,000 sayyah. And 10 is, to be honest, it's for most people, is not too much. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Many people, the matter of sayyah is very easy. We'll come to some explanation regarding these things. Anyway, just because we want to focus on the chapter and the hadith with regards to the chapter. What I am advising, yeah, brothers, that they should try to pray in jama'ah as much as they can. Forget about the discussion. Jama'ah is wajib upon me or not wajib. Okay? Try to do it as much as you can. You need to do it. You need to do it. It is in your favor. And subhanallah, salat al-jama'ah increases the iman. No one can tell me that salah by himself is similar to salat al-jama'ah in terms of iman, in terms of its impact on the person. And 
as we are discussing this. I want to say, my dear brothers and sisters, make sure that your children go to the masjid. I know, because I spoke about this number of times, and everyone says, Ya Akhi, Masalan, in the West, to push the children to go to the masjid is a nightmare. I know it is a nightmare, but we need to save them from the fire of hell. Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu qu anfusakum ahlikum naran wa quduha nasu al-hijara. Guard yourself. Guard your families. Protect yourself. Protect your families. Protect your children. Protect anyone whom you can protect. Protect them and guard them against what? The fire of hell. What is the fire of hell? Huh? The fuel of the fire of hell is what? People. And stones. Subhanallah. It's not something easy. It is not something easy. One of the early scholars, Mujahid, he said, Mujahid is one of the students of Ibn Abbas. He said, I had a conversation between one of the companions and his son. Yeah, he said to him, my son, have you attended the jama'ah? He said, yes, my father. He said, have you attended takbiratul ihram? The first takbir. He said, no, my father, I missed it. I missed it. He said, my son, wallahi, what you missed is more valuable than getting two precious camels. At that time, when they want to talk about precious camels was precious properties, yeah, they talk about precious camels. Just by missing what? One time. One time. Takbirat al-Ihram. Sufyan ibn Uyayna, he said, if you want to honor Salat al-Jama'ah, make sure you attend before the Iqamah. And in another narration, he said, if you want to be from a Salihin, make sure that you attend before the Adhan. Adi ibn Hatim, one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he was a Christian and he accepted Islam. He was a Christian, not Mushrik. Yeah, he came from north of the peninsula. And his story is well known. He reported a few hadith, very powerful hadith, very meaningful hadith. He said, Wallahi, the time for salah never came to me, and I am not on a state of tahara. One of the scholars, one of the quba of Bayt al Maqdis, Sulaiman ibn Hamza, he was 90 years of age, almost 90 years of age. And he said, I have never missed salatul jama'ah except twice in my life. What 90 years, throughout 90 years, he missed Salat al Jama'ah only twice. And when I missed them, I feel that I haven't prayed. Hmm. Hatim al Asam, one of the scholars of the second generation, third generation, one of the greatest scholars, he said, I missed Salat al Jama'ah, and one of the people gave me condolences. And wallahi, missing Salat al Jama'ah is more important for me than losing my son. And if I lose my son, 10,000 people will give me condolences. And look how people treat this and how people treat this. Yeah? Sa'id ibn al Musayyib, one of the greatest scholars, he said when he was on his deathbed, his daughter was worried about him. He said to him, My daughter, don't be worried about your father. By Allah. Yeah? I have never prayed in the Second line, the second row. I have never seen the back of a person in the salah, which means that he never prayed in the second row. Yeah? For 50 years, for 50 years, I have not done that. That's not just going to the masjid. Or no, that, this first... is not going to the masjid only. This is going as early as possible to attend salat al jamaah I am sure, see, I am sure that many of the audience now, they will say, Sheikh, don't push too much, Sheikh, come on, don't push too much, because we have our work, we have our business, we have, during that time, those people were dedicated for their salah, for their ibadah, it's not like for us. I accept a level of this. But at least put your akhirah on the list as well. Put your akhirah in the first. The first, it should be the first, not just in the list. And if you put it in the first, wallahi, 
you will be given support by Allah Jalla wa ala that you will be able to do many of the Islamic activities. Don't present excuses. Yeah? Don't present excuses. And don't discuss the issue of Salat al-Jama'ah wajib or not wajib. As we said, Allah Jalla wa ala says to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَإِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ فَأَقَمْتَ لَهُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَلْتَقُمْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ مَعَكَ If إِذَا كُنْتَ فِيهِمْ means in the war. Yeah? And you want to pray, طَائِفَ مِنْهُمْ Which means that they have to pray in congregation in that time, at that place. Yes. See, we are not talking about the importance of salah. This is given, خلاص, finish. We are talking about the importance of salat al-jama'ah. A lot of discussion, we can come back to it insha'Allah when we discuss the issue of jama'ah insha'Allah. But I wanted to say that salatul jama'ah, hmm? salatul jama'ah, in many cases, in many cases, can be achieved by simple means. Yeah? By simple means. If you could not genuinely, or if there is no masjid around you, Pray jama'ah with your wife. Pray jama'ah with your friend. There are many people I know. I receive these questions. Yeah? I'll give you a scenario about Salat al-Jama'ah, but we are running out of time. Brothers and sisters, please come back to us after the break. We shall conclude on this topic and then continue looking at the hadith in the first chapter of Riyadh al-Salihin of Ikhlas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet, may peace be upon him, said, Truthfulness leads to albir, that is, piety, righteousness, and every act of obedience to Allah, and albir leads to paradise and a man keeps on telling the truth until he becomes a Siddiq that is a truthful person falsehood leads to al fujur that is wickedness evil doing etc and al fujur leads to the hell fire and a man keeps on telling lies till he is written as a liar before Allah Sahih Al Bukhari Volume 8 Book of Manners Hadith Number 6094 Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this, while others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal, 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 while others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are, you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al-Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al-Hakim in Umdat al-Ahkam. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to the continuation of the discussion with myself and Sheikh Haytham al Haddad. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. You were just about to tell us something else about the importance of Salat al Jama'ah. Yes. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. I said among the very common questions that we receive in the West is, Sheikh, I live in a big building, there is no nearby masjid, but there are some neighbors who are Muslims. Is it a must that we pray in jama'ah? Yes, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Sheikh, where? Find a place. The whole world is a masjid. Find a place. There is no masjid, no place. Find a place. And you need to work towards finding a place. And until you find a place, it is wajib upon you. If you don't work to find a place to pray in jama'ah, 
in that place which will be called the masjid, you might be sinful or it is likely that you will be sinful. Why is this? Allah Jalla wa Ala commanded us to what? To establish masajid. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ Command. Yes. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدٍ Masajid. What is the masajid? Masajid are places to pray salah. So if there are masajid, that's why Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, leave this discussion, yeah, about salat al-jama'a wajib or not wajib from this a direct textual perspective. He said, the masajid. Allah commanded us to build masajid. In Sharia, there are rulings for masajid that one of the best deeds, yeah, is to build a masjid, man bana lillahi masjidan, etc., etc. What is the purpose of those masajid? For people to pray in jama'ah. If we were to say that jama'ah is not wajib, then there will be a Muslim country with no masajid, a Muslim community with no masajid. Can this happen? Of course not. Otherwise, when Allah Jalla wa'ala said, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا what does it mean? It means nothing. So it doesn't mean we don't need to have a hadith that says build a masjid directly like this. Otherwise you will be sinful. No, from the general hadith. So what I am saying is that those brothers who are living in a building and they have many Muslims there, they must find some facilities to what? Pray in jama'ah. To pray in jama'ah. Otherwise, they will be what? Sinful. Sinful. Full stop. Subhanallah. My dear brothers and sisters, the one who intends khair, he will find it. The one who intends khair, he will find it. A brother told me that, again, he had a lecture about salat al-jama'ah, etc. And he started to pray in jama'ah all his salawat. He said one time he was traveling traveling from one city to another city or what. And then the salah time came, so he stopped. He was traveling by train, he stopped. And he went out of the station thinking, that was I think in London, he wanted to pray in a masjid. He did not find the masjid. He felt sorry to pray by himself. Mm. He said, sincerely, I wanted to pray in jama'ah. So I was just wandering around. A person came from nowhere. A Muslim brother came from nowhere. And he told him, brother, can I help you? Are you looking for something? He said, wallahi, akhi, I'm looking for a masjid. He said, why? He said, I want to pray. He said, wallahi, I haven't prayed as well. And they prayed together. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> If Allah knows that there is khair in your hearts, Allah will give you better than what he has taken from you. This is a golden rule. But if Allah knows that this person internally does not want, does not aim, yeah, does not wish the khair or sincerely, strongly, yeah, Allah will leave him, Allah will not give him anything. That's why Allah Jalla Ala says, وَأَمَّا مَبْنْ بَخِلَ وَاسْتَغْنَى وَكَذَّبَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُوا يَسِّرُوا لِلْعُسْرَى وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَثًا فَثَبَّطَهُمْ The munafiqeen, because they don't want to leave for jihad, Allah Jalla Ala did not want to help them. In fact, Allah Jalla Ala discouraged them from going, because in reality themselves they didn't want to go. And in non-Muslim countries, I say to people, أخي, my dear brother, I am sure that you have a holiday, one day off. Make sure if you claim that you can't pray in jama'ah, yeah, because of your work, because of, and we need to be realistic, as you said, okay, let us accept this. Although this is not really acceptable. But let us just overlook this point for the sake of argument, at least on the day of holiday. Make sure you go and attend the masjid. When we discuss the issue of jama'ah, insha'Allah, we will discuss the psychological impact of salah of jama'ah. I will not discuss it now. On the yeah. individuals and on society? On the individuals and the society, not only this, but even on the non-Muslim society. Yeah? It has a major impact.
before we conclude this episode, I remember the story, a very nice story, subhanAllah. I would like to mention it about the importance of Salat al-Jama'ah and those people who are living in one place, yeah, and that they are obliged to pray in Jama'ah. In Britain, there is an area called Exeter. Exeter, you don't live far away from Exeter. Very close. Yeah, no. very close. Exeter is not part of Wales, isn't no. it? It's not part of Wales. It's south, yeah, southwest. There is a big masjid, a huge masjid there. Hmm? The story of this masjid is really amazing, and I would like every single brother or sister even to listen to this story. That big, huge masjid, yeah, that is, as they say, a landmark in Exeter. How did that masjid start? It started as follows. There was an Egyptian brother who went to Exeter University to do his PhD. So that brother was praying. He rented a flat, a small flat, two bedrooms for him and his wife. Then he noticed that there is another brother who came to do his PhD. He told him, Akhi, you are living in that place. I'm living in this place. We don't pray jama'ah together. There is no masjid in our city. Let us pray together. He said, where can we pray? He said, Akhi, I have two rooms. Let us pray in one room. So they agreed and they organized themselves. So the other brother, the new brother, will come to the flat of this brother. Pray jama'ah, yeah, and then leave. After just a few months, another person came, then another Muslim came, and then they were gathering together, praying in the flat of this person. They told him, hey, this is not suitable. Yani, this is not convenient for your family, for you, for... What did they do? Just quickly, they said, let us rent the flat, this flat, let us rent it and make it as our masjid. So they rent it. And he moved somewhere else, yeah, very near to that flat. So they were praying in that flat. After some time, they said, we have some money, let us buy that flat and make it as a masjid. After some time, the Muslim community grew. And they managed to buy the whole building, three floors. They managed to buy the whole building. Subhanallah, the brother who was telling me the story, he said, in a year or so, or maybe two years, after we've been using this as the prayer hall, there was a small factory. And next to it, there was a big park. So the small factory was put on auction for sale. This guy, he said, I don't know business. I don't know how auctions work. However, I traveled all the way from Exeter to London to bid for it. And we won the auction. And we didn't know how to pay. We just put the down payment and we didn't know how to pay the full price. But by the will of Allah Jalla wa'ala, we managed to pay the full price. Then we started to, to pray there and to fix it. The council gave us the park and they said, this land, all of it for you. Subhanallah. Yeah? So the whole area, big area. Then what happened, subhanAllah, this brother told me, he's an old person, a very simple person. He said, one of the rich people came, yeah, from the Gulf. So he was doing PhD in the University of Exeter or something like this. He said, I went to him and I told him, listen, you are a rich person. Sometimes you would buy a horse or something for millions of pounds. This we want you to build this as a masjid. There is no masjid in Exeter, yeah? And this will cost around two and a half million pounds to build. Yeah? So that guy, he said, okay, I'll give you half of the price. So he gave us half of the price and we started to collect the other half. And this masjid, I saw it before it was ready. This masjid, yeah, which is now a landmark in Exeter or in that area, started because this brother was keen to pray in jama'ah in his own small flat against the convenience of his own family. SubhanAllah, amazing story. Shows the importance of jama'ah and what it will lead to. And what it will lead to, and imagine, the Prophet SallAllahu said that whoever builds a masjid for Allah, even if it is small, Allah will build for him a house in Jannah. 
Imagine this masjid and whoever prays in that masjid will give a similar reward to this Egyptian brother who started the idea. All of this because this person was keen to pray in Japan. SubhanAllah. Brothers and sisters, please return to us in the next episode where we shall continue to look at the chapter of Ikhlas in Riyad al-Salihin, which is the first chapter. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, he is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent his messenger